Good afternoon, I'm Vashon Brown with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. Sections of Mountain View Avenue in St. Andrew are now tense following this morning's fatal shooting of a man on Deanery Avenue. The incident happened sometime after 7. Residents blocked a section of Mountain View Avenue following the shooting, which resulted in a traffic pileup. A tractor and dump truck were used to clear the road. Investigators say the shooting incident stemmed from an escalating gang feud between Jake's Road and Goodrich Lane. The police believe men from Backbush are being drawn into the feud. Head of the Kingston Eastern Police Division, Senior, Super Senior Superintendent Victor Hamilton, says the police will be maintaining a strong presence in the area to prevent another flare-up of violence. The Major Investigation Division is now conducting a high-level probe into the shooting which claimed three lives in Portmore St. Catherine last night. One of the deceased is said to be a family member of a Jamaica Labour Party caretaker. TVJ's Prince Moore reports. While everyone is busy preparing for Christmas, one family has been plunged into mourning. 74-year-old Pamela Russell, her daughter 48-year-old Shamela Russell Craig, and grandson 21-year-old Ramira Craig, were at home Sunday night when they met their untimely death. According to the police, about 9.20, men entered the house and opened gunfire on the family. Counselor for the Waterford Division, Fenley Douglas, says the incident was unexpected, considering that Portmore, which is part of the St. Catherine South Police Division, has been under a state of emergency. This, this took us by shock for several reasons. We are about to go into the, the Yuletide season where we are saying, well, the fact that there's calm and peace in the community, we would have gotten a little reprieve from the state of emergency. Um, to hear that this happened here, uh, we are in, right now is like a dream for me. It's like a dream because not this home, not this area, these people, the Russells, are their model citizens. It's understood that the 74-year-old woman was the grandmother of Jamaica Labour Party Council caretaker for the Waterford Division, Krisha Holmes. But Mr. Douglas says he does not believe the attack was politically motivated. No, it couldn't be politically motivated for several reasons. Um, in, in doing your research, you would know that the Russells, they support the People's National Party, the entire household, the family, the lineage of the family supports the People's National Party. So it's far from, up from it being political. And no signs, nobody was saying anything, nobody reported anything as to any threat? Mm -mm. The entire community is calm and is, is at peace. Prince Moore, TVJ News. Mayor of Maypen, Winston Mirage, will be meeting with vendors who have been affected by a market fire on Sunday. Speaking to TVJ News a short while ago, Mr. Mirage said he, along with other members of the municipal corporation and members of the business sector, toured the market this morning to assess the damage. Several vendors have been displaced from the Maypen market since the fire. Most of them lost everything in the blaze. We, we assessed the damage for ourselves. We do have the fire department who has their investigators on the ground going through. We'll get a report from them later. And what we're going to do now is to meet with the vendors who are affected. So we'll, we'll be moving now to the metal church hall of the road to have a meeting with them to tell them of our decisions on the way forward. Former head of the Police Traffic Division, Radcliffe Lewis, is recommending that the Police Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch of the Jamaica Constabulary Force immediately implement two separate traffic enforcement policies. He says there's a need for a policy to deal specifically with certain types of motorists, like minibus drivers and taxi operators. He was addressing a graduation ceremony for police force drivers in Negril, Westmoreland recently. We have more in this report. Lawlessness on the roads is a major cause for concern. For Radcliffe Lewis, taxi operators and bus drivers are oftentimes at the center of the chaos on the roads, a headache for other road users. But in Kingston, they are now driving on the right-hand side of the road, which, which has now become the order of the day. They are disobeying traffic lights. They go through premises of petrol station to circumvent traffic lights. They drive on sidewalk and soft shoulders, ca causing pedestrians to resort to flight measures. 
Mr. Lewis says about 250,000 traffic tickets are unpaid, and he argues that some drivers have become more brazen. Tear up the ticket, and I, I figure more or less that sometimes you people have the experience. They tear up the ticket in front of the issuing officers, and the summons are dealt with in the same fashion. They are not attending court neither. The only effective actions to be taken is to arrest these offenders. It's why he's now recommending that the Police Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch immediately implement two separate traffic enforcement policies. One of the policy is for decent law-abiding citizens. <laughs> and the other one is for indiscipline drivers, minibus drivers, that are referred to as road hacks. Until the new Road Traffic Act takes effect, Mr. Lewis is recommending that the police put a hold on the issuing of tickets to these minibus drivers and taxi operators because they're not paying the tickets. I consider writing ticket now a waste of time. So what I'm saying, arrest them. And when you arrest them, when they're arrested, they must not be given their own bail. <laughs> they must they must be taken to court and given court bail. Eh? He notes that these recommendations are not a draconian, but they're to ensure that lawlessness does not prevail. And it's now time for a break, but stay with us. More stories right after these messages. Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us, continuing the news now. And before we go to sports, we return to an earlier story where controversy is brewing over debushing works in Northampton, St. Elizabeth. This as residents staged a protest this morning, demanding payment due to them. Here's TVJ's Shamela Pullen. On Friday, residents of Northampton in St. Elizabeth carried out debushing works. TVJ News understands that the project was first commissioned under the local constituency development fund. However, following the Prime Minister's recent announcement about a new bushing program, a decision was made to halt the project. This angered residents who staged a protest. They claim they have not received any payment for the work done. We get the understand that one single member of the community got on the PMP office, go report and call come in and said, stop. However, this morning, one single man up on the road a brush. We don't understand what going on. Friday evening, a man come, two men come, the man who gave out the work, and the next man, only for no say, we only are going to get paid for half day because that yes, man, road that wasn't work. on the contract. That cannot work because we cannot work from 6 o'clock till after 12 and get half day pay. So I pay labor right up on the work. Uh -huh. And I pay one labor right up on the work and I want to pay work for it. Yeah, because of politics. Who are my $5,000? This road never depends. How this road not depends? You and the same Friday morning, the man said, he can't get nobody for rush. This road is so, so we are going to brush it. And some general ship this. You can't deal with the citizens in my country. so. And Andrew who is grant the money. I want the money grant for after some time, the roadway was cleared by the police, who warned the residents to desist from blocking the road. It's understand that the NWA will now assume responsibility for bushing in the constituency. I will not take the disorderly behavior from no yeah, man, right, man, right, man, right, man. Nobody right. stopping it from demonstrating. I've got no work. I know it will be paid. Someone coming to take speak to you, so do not block the road. So we don't have any content loader here. Realize I'm man for what I can hear it The member of parliament told TVJ News that if the road does not fall under the new NWA program, he will have to pay all 31 workers. Shimela Pullen, TVJ News. And to sports now, the marquee fixture of yesterday's RSPL match between leaders Waterhouse and former champions Tivoli Gardens was postponed as half of the officials failed to turn up for the game at the Edward Siago Sports Complex. Waterhouse were looking to wind their lead atop the table to 11 points while Tivoli Gardens were aiming to rise from the relegation zone. However, with no points on offer due to the postponement of the game, fans were left contesting a refund. But like the game, none was forthcoming. With a 50% price reduction for the next game, the solution given. 
Match commissioner for the game, Elaine Walker-Brown, sought to explain the postponement. Only two referees has arrived to the venue. Um, I must say that the JFF um, person in charge of refereeing has tried very hard. It's just unfortunate that they did not get here in time because both teams had agreed that they will wait until 3.20 to play the game because there's no light at this venue. Unfortunately, the referees did not turn up on time, so we have to call off the game. Referees were also late for the Portmore United and Dumbo Holden encounter at the prison Zofal, where Dumbo Holden clipped the champions to one. The champions started the day in ninth position and were staring down the barrel of a second straight defeat when Dean Andre Thomas scored from the penalty spot in the 14th minute. And it's before the break, Saniki Burton doubled the visitors' advantage to stun the hosts. National striker Corey Burke gave Portmore United hope two minutes after the break with his sixth goal of the season, but it was not enough to stop coach Ricardo Bibi Gardner from losing his seventh game of the season. Three massive points here today. Um, hard work, played hard work um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, a very hot sun today, but we stayed compact and we did what we were told to do and ends the three points today. We want to, 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 to get back a, a momentum going forward, but as I said, it's a disappointing result and we just have to look at it again and come again. Now, even with new saver Calvert Fitzgerald at the helm, there is still yet to be a resurrection for Malines United as they suffered a 1-0 defeat to Humble Lion for their seventh loss in their last nine games. Yeah, I think it's a game that we control throughout. You know, it was a, it's a good win. You know, we needed this win, special playing at home, to get these three points. Uh, uh, Malines was ahead of us, so we definitely needed to beat them to surpass them and I think we got the job done. I think that the team fought, they played well, you know. When I just, I just took out the team, this is my first game. I only had one training session with them and I like what I see. Nobody likes to lose, but I see a lot more positive than negative. Renardo Brown for TVJ Sports. Now elsewhere, Ver United and UEFC played out a nil-all draw, while Harbourview lost 2-1 to Cavalier. In tonight's fixtures, Arnett Gardens will host Mount Pleasant Academy at 8 p.m. And that's the Midday News. I'm Vashon Brown on behalf of the entire team. Good afternoon.